That's ahead with first time for Canada's worst persons in the world, the bronze to billow the clown. He has cried havoc and let slip the dogs of war. Well, he sent out one of his stalker producers again. It's the closest thing he can do. This time it is Newsday contributor Jenna Kern Rugel, who wrote a piece in the wake of the church murders in Nashville by a lunatic who had obviously heard one too many right wing talking points on TV and radio. She mentioned that shooter Jim Adkison had decided all liberals needed to die and that police reported the books in his home included those of Michael Savage, Sean Hannity, and O'Reilly. She mentioned O'Reilly only one other time in the whole piece. There was a quote from one of his books. For this, O'Reilly sent somebody to her house who waited for her with a camera in her driveway and then abused her. Seriously, Bill, for that? Are you 100% paranoid now? The next time you send one of these guys out, will it be to harass some guy who cut you off on the Pulaski Skyway? The silver to William Crystal. Another week, another New York Times column, another factual error. On the cone of silence story and the contention that Senator McCain may not have been in it, in the print edition, Crystal writes, quote, that's pretty astonishing since there seems to be absolutely no basis for the charge. Since the Times' own news coverage confirmed McCain wasn't in any cone of silence, and then the McCain campaign did the same thing, online the Times changed that one line in there of Crystal's to, there's no evidence that McCain had any such advantage. Given that this is at least the fourth factual correction or alteration of a Crystal column after it was published, it's pretty clear what the New York Times' idea was here. Give a column to a conservative writer, the least qualified one they could find. Speaking of, our winner, Jerome Corsi. He still sits atop the nonfiction bestseller list as conservatives and racists looking for an excuse to vote against Obama while rationalizing it's not because he's black, vie to snap up his hilariously error-riddled book, Obama Nation. But this may all soon change. Not the bestseller part, the non-fiction part. Unfortunately, a little mining of the wacky conservative website World Net Daily proves that Mr. Corsi has not only slandered the John Kerry's and Barack Obama's of this world, but one of his other favorite targets for character assassination is John McCain. Jerome Corsi's March 2nd article was headlined, Group Tied to Al-Qaeda Backs McCain for Prez. Jerome Corsi's February 26th article was headlined, McCain fortune traced to organized crime, mob figures later implicated in Arizona savings and loan scandal. Well, this guy Corsi apparently just likes to write crap about presidential candidates for money. So remember, conservatives, every time you buy a copy of Obama Nation, you are validating reporting that suggests John McCain's money comes from the mob and his presidential candidacy is supported by Al-Qaeda. Reporting done by Jerome Corsi, today's worst person in the world.